house. But God said, man, that God, he's created a source in this house. And it's not by advocates that he planted you in this area. God said, your ministry is like a river. A river that is flowing. And he is going to draw the hearts of the man that is around this region, my God. I just see an open heaven over this ministry. I just see an open portal over this ministry. Get it, get it, get it. 
me tell you something. When the church had closed during the pandemic, you knew who those, you knew those that had a relationship with God and those that didn't. Come on, somebody. You knew those that were really anchored in God and those that weren't. The ones that weren't are those that got a relationship with their pastors more than they got a relationship with God. Come on, they feel coming to church on Sundays and during Bible study days. That is enough. That means that they're saved. They got it all together. But God said, I'm calling my sons back to me. I know this is not a popular message, but Revelation chapter 2. It said to the people, keep on playing. It said to the angels of the church in Ephesus, it said, These are the words to him who hold the seven stars in his right hand and walk among the seven golden lampstands. He said, I know your deeds and your labor and your perseverance. And I know that you cannot tolerate those who are evil. You have tested and exposed liars, those who are falsely claimed to be apostles, without growing weary. And I have preserved and endured many things. For my name's sake, you've endured many things. But he said, but this I have against you. And this may not be for every house. But he said, I need you to release this world prophetess in the house today. He said, tell my people that they have abandoned their first love. I said, God, well, how, how they abandoned their first love if they're coming to you, they're praying, they're shouting, they're dancing. I mean, apparently they're still showing you that they, they love. He said, no, 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 no. He said, tell them they have abandoned their first love. Somewhere down the line, we've lost our positioning. We, we've lost our focus to journey with God. And he said, I'm calling them back into my presence. I'm calling them back into my word. And I'm calling them back into prayer. Oh, church. He said, how my sons have gone so far from me. Come on. We praise God with our lips, but our hearts are so far from God. We give God just enough. Come on. We tell God thank you and we say the ABC prayers and we go to sleep. But God said, I'm calling my sons back to me. I'm calling my sons to journey with me. I'm calling my sons, come on, somebody, back to my eternal presence. Let me tell you something. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But everything we need is in the presence of God. He said, but my people are missing it. We're, we're running after prophetic conferences and, and we're going word after word. We're in churches Sunday after Sunday. But then there's no changes because the relationship with God has been blurred. Come on, somebody. But God said, I'm calling you back to journey with me again. Because everything that you need is in my presence. So the fulfillment that you need is in my presence. So the wholeness that you need is in my presence. It's in my presence. Jesus. It's in my presence. We say, how, 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 how we abandoned you, God. We come to church. Come on, we tell people every now and then about you. Let me tell you something. As sons of God, because of because you've been raised with the Spirit of God, God ain't just calling us to be saved and that's it and wait for time for us to make it to heaven. But there's a journey in God that he wants you to take you to travel with him. You guys are supernatural beings living in this natural experience. This earth is not your habitation. You are just passing by, but you are sons of God. Call to demonstrate. Call to legislate. Call to put things in order. But we got to come in with the things of God. We got to come in with the presence of God. He said, I'm calling my son.
Remember when you told God, yes, come on, I'll serve you. And yeah, yes, Lord, it's about me and you and nothing could ever separate you from God's presence. Come on, somebody. It didn't matter if a boyfriend called or a girlfriend called or a friend called. Nothing could interrupt the time with you and God. Come on, somebody. God said, I'm yearning for that position again. Come on. Not no Facebook. Come on. Not no Instagram. Not no Snapchat. Nothing could separate you from me. And God said, I'm calling you back to, to journey with me again. There are some things I want to show you. There are some things I want to unlock in you. There are some things I want to reveal to you. But God said, I need you to come back to me. I'm calling you to journey back to me. We still worship. Well, she, she couldn't be talking to me. I, I come to church. Hallelujah. I'm saved. I come to church. She's not talking to me. Let me tell you something. Even as I was writing this word, God began to reveal some things even within me. You hear? He, 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 began, he took me back, man of God, when I first got saved. You know, you know. He, he took me back in here because he, before the word could be released to you, he got to hit me first. And you gotta, I got to be the first partaker of the word. Amen. So, so just as I have one finger pointed. You, I got three pointed at me. Hallelujah. So, so God took me. He began to show me some things. He began to say, Hallelujah. He said, Remember back in the days, glory to God. Hallelujah. When nobody knew who you were. Come on. When you were just coming up in me, you wanted to get to know me in a more excellent way. Come on. You wanted everything concerning me, nothing to separate you. But this I have against me because sometimes we get. Where you are. Come on, we can't 
just live for God when the church congregation gathers together. Come on. We can't just live for God when we come from Bible study. We can't just live for God. Come on, with the man of God call a prayer meeting. Come on. This walk with God is a seven-day-a-week walk. It's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday walk. Hallelujah. This, yes, is an everyday walk. Hallelujah. Not just when we gather. But I heard God told me, he said, tell my church to repent. Tell my church to turn back. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, and I'm coming back for a glorified body. Come on. I'm coming back for a body who is spotless. I'm coming back for a glorified body. Not the one that pretends to play church. Not the one, come on somebody, we, we come in a form of godliness. But we deny.
the weapon of distraction. If he can draw your mind away from God, he has taken the position of your first love. Hallelujah. It is a Latin, it is from a root word of a Latin word, which means distraction of, which is a pulling apart and separating. Come on, somebody, there's nothing wrong with pursuit of happiness. There's nothing wrong with going after your goals and your dreams. But we have to make sure that our goals and our dreams don't become a distraction. Because we're pursuing things, but we're not pursuing God. Come on, somebody, but we're going.
got to see what we say we've been doing for God. If it really was for God. Mm -hmm. I, I've been meditating. I've been saying, God, you know, sometimes God will give us a pass when we first come in. You know, he will give you a pass because, you know, some of the stuff we do, it ain't really for him. If we be honest, come on. Some of us are broken. This is what must be pushing us because we want people to know that God uses us to come. If we, we really be honest, come on. Because this person said I can't do it, so I'm going to show them that I can do it. If we really be honest, some of the things that we've been claiming that is for God really has been for flesh gratification. Because they told me I could not do it, so I said I'm going to show them. Because they told me I was nobody, I said I'm going to show them. And sometimes God will give you a pass because we would have known better. And he know we're immature. And, and when God looks at us, he, even though he looks at us complete, but he understands because of what mama and daddy and them said. And this is what is driving them right now. Or because of what grandma said that you would never be nothing. And that is the driving force. But there comes a time where every man has to mature in God. Twenty twenty. 
was leaving. People that I wanted to hold on to. Come on. The way, the way I wanted to hold on to doing ministry, God began to knock that down. The environments that I was in, God, he removed me from it. He began to allow people to walk away. Come on. People that said he would be able to help me and help me carry the vision. God allowed them to slap the door. He allowed them to walk away. Because I came to deal with you. Let me tell you something, it's better to let something go with it. 
Let me tell you something, girl. But when I first got married, I got a book coming out, y'all. Let me tell y'all something. I, don't put, I, don't, I can only put me out there. I can't put you out there. I can only put me out there. When I first got married, because there were certain traumas in me that I didn't realize that were there until I got married. I remember in our beginning stages of marriage, I used to blame my husband for everything, y'all, to be honest. He made me, I said, because you, 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 you did that, you know, he's look at me. Anyways, amen, we ain't tried to run. Girl, that's what I would look at him and say, you the problem. I spoke in another tongue. He spoke in another tongue, y'all, amen. Not the broken stuff, but you know what I mean. Amen. I would look at him like, you the problem. No. I was the problem. Sometimes we, we got traumas and triggers in here because we don't deal with it. We, we, we listen with our trigger ears. We, we listen with our trauma ears. Come on, somebody. We see with our trauma eyes. Come on. I don't mind to put myself out there because when I first got married, I didn't realize I had trauma locked on the inside of me. But then God had to tell me everything that you're looking for in your husband. I'm the only one that can supply it. You already got. You gotta already be fulfilled before that man come. You gotta already be full before he come. Our husband is not meant to fulfill our needs, but me, you are what? God is meant to fulfill your needs. It's an honor to be married, but I don't need to be married. Let me say that again. Not to say I don't need your name, but I'm saying. No, Amen. That. It's an honor to be married. Amen. Can you hear me, somebody? It's an honor to be married, but I don't need to be married because he does not fulfill my needs. Only God can do that. It's, a, it's an honor to be called a wife, but the glory is not to be called a wife, but the glory is because I'm a son of God and I draw from a well that never run dry. Let me tell you something. My love is limitless. Limit. It is limited. Come on. There's only so much you can give as a person. Come on.
crutches and leave without the crutches. They're gonna come in your wheelchairs and leave without the wheelchairs because I found your heart to be fit to carry my glory. Don't try to fit in, don't try to blend in because what I'm placing on the inside of you is the seed of man and God and it's one peculiar nation. You have not been called to fit in, but you've been called to stand. Thank you. 
you in the name of Jesus. I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 